This time, on episode 456 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we discuss the 1992 X-Men animated series season 4, episodes 15, 16, and 17 as presented on Disney+, and weekly Marvel Studio news, including Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse, the official trailer. Marvel's Wonder Man series may arrive in late 2023, and Marvel pushes Thor 4 and Doctor Strange 2 for Best Picture Oscars. I'm Doc. Issues from Capes on the Couch, a show that examines the mental health issues of comic book characters, part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other amazing geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a S.H.I.E.L.D. debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for a scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Michelle. I'm Agent Chris. And I'm producer of the show, Director S.P. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe fan show discussing the Marvel Cinematic and Marvel Comic Book Universes as told on screen by a bunch of people reporting to Kevin Feige at Marvel Studios. This show is recorded on Saturday, December 17th, 2022, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast Saturday cartoon morning wide. Come and join our live chat as we record. And if you didn't already catch on to it, we love talking about Marvel. Because of having too many cooks in the kitchen. If you want to see a place that could possibly maybe have too many cooks in the kitchen, check out our website at legendsofshield.com. If you would like to discuss how people annoy you about adding spices to your recipe, you can leave us a voicemail at 844 the bus one It's 844-843-2871. If you need to anonymously rant about how somebody else is trying to be a cook in your kitchen and you just need them to get the heck out of there, you could do that over on Twitter because in a few weeks it probably won't be around anyway. But while it's there, tag us at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. You can see us on YouTube at youtube.com slash gunnageek. You can always join up our Discord server at gunnageek.com slash discord. And talk about the best dish to make when you just really need to get somebody out of your kitchen. And remember, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a proud member of the GunnaGeek.com network. And we appreciate the value of leftovers. (laughs) Very much so. I just ended my Thanksgiving leftovers a couple of days ago, actually. So yay for leftovers. By the way, I've never had a Cajun cooked Christmas, so I'm not sure how that would go for me. Have either of you two experienced a Cajun Christmas? No. Not specifically Christmas, but plenty of Cajun food. And I would be down for having a Cajun Christmas. All right. Apparently, Jane was not up for a Cajun Christmas. That's her loss. Yeah. All right, so Lauren can't be with us tonight. She is actually tidying up some projects as she's going into the end of the year, so we wish her all the luck. She really wanted to be with us. She texted all of us a couple days ago, said, I just can't be there. I want to be there, and I can't be there. So, Lauren, we understand. We look forward to having Lauren back in 2023. And with that, I'll just say, hey, Merry Christmas, Lauren. It's going to be 2023? Just in a couple weeks don't believe you i'm still one of the people that are like isn't 1999 like 10 years ago i know that's because it was isn't 1990 five years ago that's usually how i go all right we have a special treat with you for you this time around because we're actually covering what i will term as the x-men the animated series holiday special it's just a normal episode it was just a holiday themed episode but we get to watch it this week are you guys ready to get to it yes it is the season we're covering a little bit more than what i just announced we're covering three episodes in season four of x-men the animated series 
But before we get there, we have a little treat for you. Previously on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Who's the father? You're the father. Xavier just can't get a break. Getting dumped by letter with the ring in it was... Wow, Moira. There's, okay, again, X-Men allegory for all sorts of minorities. The dangers of raising kids in isolation. The stuff that's, you know, in X-Men that's supposed to be, this is, a, this is something that's not real, except it is real. It's just looking at real things from a slightly different narrative. <sighs> you know, mobs of people happen. But for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> Conflict by silence. That's kind of neither here nor there. (laughs) For you audio listeners out there, you got to check out the video version over on YouTube because Chris threw some words on the screen there, basically stating that Lauren just kind of left us hanging there and we have no idea where she's going with it. So we're looking forward to her coming back in 2023 and figuring all that stuff out. It's not like I'm giving her homework, but yes, I'm giving her homework. (laughs) Everybody needs a little podcast homework every now and then. So we are covering the next three episodes for us anyway. Well, two episodes. We'll get to that in a second on X-Men, the animated series, season four, episodes 15 through 17, as shown on Disney Plus. They premiered on Fox Kids in 1995 and 1996. So season four, episode 15, Lotus and the Steel premiered on Disney Plus uh, or on Fox Kids, excuse me, on Saturday, February 3rd, 1996. Weapon X Lies and Videotape was Saturday, June 11th, 1995. And have yourself a Morlock Little Christmas was Saturday, December 23rd, 1995. I think it was very appropriate that they actually had a holiday themed episode for that time slot. And I think that's very unusual for the series to be able to say, we're going to have a holiday episode. It's going to be smacked right there on December 23rd because they had all those production issues. But season four, maybe they knocked those production issues out enough to get this done ahead of time. So, Michelle, of these three episodes, what were the IMDb descriptions? Lotus and the Steel. Wolverine heads to Japan for some solitude and soul searching, but he finds his Japanese friends under siege by a gang of bandits. Weapon X lies in videotape. Wolverine discovers everything about his past life in the government program Weapon X was a lie, including his love affair with Silver Fox. Have yourself a more like Little Christmas. Storm and grouchy humbug Wolverine go last-minute shopping in Manhattan, only to be caught in a life-or-death crisis involving Leech, the littlest Morlock. Oh, it's like Little Timmy in the Christmas Carol. Do you guys have a favorite version of a Christmas Carol? Oh, the Muppet. Yes! Yes! I was just going to say the Muppets are mine. Yes! Somebody else likes it. Mickey's Christmas Carol is also really good. Okay. Did Duckwing Duck have one? Scrooge was Scrooge, though. Uh, Okay. Darkwing never had one specifically for himself. All right. So, yeah, I enjoyed this one. And if you have never seen the Muppets Christmas Carol, go check that one out. You will be happy you did. Chris, what were your first impressions of these episodes? Overall, like you can really tell that Marvel loves Wolverine because we're looking at a lot of Wolverine. And I feel like we can say that a lot, but it's also true a lot. These episodes are a good set of advertisements for the benefits of therapy. Season four is way better than I had anticipated based on everybody's like, yeah, kind of crust at season three. And then by season five, it's like, <laughs> well, I haven't seen season five yet. I'll have to say some of the episodes in season four are actually pretty good because it's not just clip shows. We're dealing with integrated scenes from the past that help us understand where we are with the shows. So 
I'm actually enjoying some of these. I think they're well written. I think they're well produced. And if it saves them some money to use a little bit of clip shows, I'm okay with that, especially if it adds to the story. And I'm not the key audience. I'm not the key demographic for this. It was like seven to 12 year olds was the key demographic. So those people have different needs than me anyway. Well, most of the time, because sometimes I act like I'm five. But anyway, we need to talk about the clips in here and how watching Lotus and the Steel or Lotus and Steel was actually better this time around because we've already covered it once, but Disney Plus shuffled these episodes while we were covering it. So, Michelle, what did you think the second time around with this? It made much more sense since we had seen the Proteus episode and the Nightcrawler episodes with him, especially with Wolverine questioning his faith, finding faith. It's made better when you watch Weapon X Lies in videotape. In my opinion, I think Weapon X Lies in videotape should be switched with Lotus and Steel because in Lotus and Steel, Xavier mentions is part of the problem finding out that a lot of your memories are messed up. And we don't find out that Wolverine's memories were messed up until the next episode, Weapon X Lies in videotape. But it does make a lot more more sense now. Yeah, all these flashbacks to things that have happened, like it worked well enough the first time for somebody like me who has a pretty good idea of what's happened in the comics anyway. But having the Proteus episodes basically just happen, having everything else you can go back and look at and Wolverine, this is just a great use of clips here because this is a 90s cartoon you can't count on everybody seeing everything so if you have somebody who happened to miss a, the nightcrawler episode you have nightcrawler pop up on the screen real quick and this is the kind of clip show i can appreciate one of the things that i noticed in this episode was logan was rushing into the burning temple to save the old man and i think it's it was brave, a brave action. It was proof that he should still be an X-Men because well, part of the reason is he's questioning himself whether he really should be an X-Men or not and dealing with all these memories and this past that he has. He's still got it. Even when he's trying not to, he actually pulls this off. Now, a couple of times he turned around like, oh, okay, I'm not going to fight. I'll give him that. But he still rushed into a burning building. And I was thinking about this. He's going to survive no matter what, he might be burned horribly, which is a terrible pain. The way I've heard it described, it's some of the most terrible pain that you can still feel and be alive. So it's not light what he does, but he does it anyway. So kudos off to Wolverine for this particular scene. He learns that there are different ways to protect people, and sometimes you do have to use violence i don't know if violence is the right word but in wolverine's case violence in order to protect people because there are those who can't protect themselves but still need help and ultimately he helps the village which <laughs> these these he's been to a couple of them by now right these japanese villages and uh this episode's just proof that uh, modern Japanese motorcycle gangs are just ill-prepared to deal with the ancient Japanese defenses of fish, logs, and holes in the ground. I mean, logs are no joke. Those things are big and heavy and dense, and there's a reason why you build fortresses out of them. I particularly like the logs coming down from the basically hot air balloons the little mini hot air balloons on strings whatever they go up there with like little fireplace logs right and they rain down on the motorcycles and the people who if they were wearing helmets maybe it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal but i don't remember them wearing helmets no so there's a lesson to you kids always wear helmets because you have no idea if you're going to get hit with a log in the head from the sky here's the thing back in the 90s what were car seats wearing seat belts all the time like that really wasn't that came into with the 90s i when i grew up i remember 
sitting on this weird, okay, some older cars in the front seat. He had this weird wide arm set thing. And I remember like they would push it down and I would sit on it when I was like five. And like when my mom or grandma had to like stop real hard, you know, I had that the mom seatbelt, which is the arm coming over because, you know, the power of the mom arm would definitely stop me from going through the windshield because it's the power of the mom arm. And I mean, come on. Of course, they weren't wearing helmets. The 90s. The power of the mom arm. I used to do that. I used to, as I'm driving along, I used to throw my right arm out to whoever was in the passenger seat. Didn't matter if it was another dude, a girl I was dating, or one of my kids. I always do that. They always felt like safer or whatever. Like, Dad, you have really fast reflexes. I'm like, yeah, well, I know. And I just want to keep you safe. But at the same time, why aren't you wearing your seatbelt? <laughs> exactly. But um, here's the thing. If you have one of those older cars, don't do that. Seatbelts are a good thing. They are. I watch some refurbishments of old cars, and one of the things that they do to be track ready is they put a five-click uh, harness, high point, five-point harness on and stuff like that. So yeah, there are always ways to retrofit an old car to be safer. You're not going to get the airbag. You're not going to get the crunch zones, but at least you can have a decent seat belt on you. My parents always made us wear seat belts growing up in the 90s. But we definitely had the 92 Volvo station wagon with the fold-up seats in the trunk. Oh, yes. Riding in the trunk, man. Oh, and riding in the bed of a pickup truck. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like when at the Weapon X episode where you have Beast just load up everyone into the bed of the truck. Like, yep. I've done that, too. Not unconscious, though. But <laughs> I was going to say, Michelle party's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually awake. I have ridden in the back of the truck at the farm all the time, which is even more dangerous because you're going over bumpy roads and stuff like that. But yeah, we did it all the time because we were just too dirty. Grandpa didn't want us in the truck. <laughs> like, get in the back. We're like, oh, Grandpa, we don't want to. It's too cold out. It's like, get in the back. Oh. So we got in the back and it was always competition because there was always more than two of us. It was competition who got the wheel wells, you know, where the wheels are, you know, the, the, like the seats. And come to find out years later that, you know, the safest spot in the warmest spot is, you know, backed up against the cab is <laughs> probably the best position for you. But anyway, we fought for those things. And. OK. We get Jubilee coming to the rescue here and. I would hope after a few years, she would get a little bit better in her piloting, but apparently not. And I know we've discussed this before, but when the Quinjet, whatever, the X-Jet came out of the mountainside and it immediately dropped to like sea level, I'm like, okay, well, there goes Jubilee. You know, that's her. I just feel for the birds. I hope she didn't hit any <laughs> birds on her way there. Bird strike, bird strike, bird strike. Yeah. And Silver Samurai was always pretty cool. I did like their little dance, their, their kabuki dance that they did before about, are you, don't get involved. Don't worry, I'm not going to get involved in between Logan and Silver Surfer. And then ultimately the two fight. And we know who wins, Wolverine, because Wolverine's the best. Wolverine is never going to lose a fight in the comics. He's never going to lose a fight in the cartoon, especially. How do you sell a toy? Of a character who loses a fight. Yeah, it's like The Rock. The Rock has in his contracts where he doesn't lose. It's the, <laughs> I think it should be called the Wolverine Clause, <laughs> pun intended. Oh, you're just bringing. My mind is going to this just because it's been news in the past week. So Paramount has been like, you know what? I know how Maverick ended, Top Gun Maverick ended, but you know, it was such a big, we could like bring that back. We could do another one. I'm like, no, no, you really can't. Uh, you, you just leave it the way it is. And if you wanted to do another one while you were doing it, you would have set it up differently, but you failed to do that. So no, I don't want to see Tom Cruise again. I want to see the kids again. I don't want to see Tom Cruise again. It's just 
my little rant. Sorry. And that is why you always leave plot threads. Right. And I guess there were some, but there could have been more. That the whole movie could be set up more in, in like this X Men the animated series. Hard to do. I mean, we talked to Eric and Julia, and they were saying, "Well, it wasn't supposed to be serialized. We kind of made it that way anyway." Okay, there's still stuff that you could do along the way, which I think, given the constraints, the X Men the animated series did a good job because we got episodes like these ones that we're talking about. All three of these, really. Well, let's go on to the next one. Weapon X Lies and Videotape, obviously a pun on the Sex Lies and Videotape that was out probably about the same time. I don't know what year that came out. But this is about Wolverine going to his past, going back up to when the team was first created and how their minds were warped. And Michelle, you've talked about this before just a few minutes ago, but I feel sorry. I even feel sorry for Sabretooth in this. Man, having your brain manipulated that way and not realizing what's real, that's hard and cruel. It's cruel to do, that's beyond gaslighting. That is, let's put all of these stories in here. And they weren't just stories. It was connected to strong emotions. Let's think wolverine has yet another ex-girlfriend because i don't know if you remember gene guy going through the stack of pictures of wolverine's exes um and so he, uh, gene's like oh i thought he only loved me nope 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 oh i'm a long oh i'm one of the long list okay but and then you know Cr saber getting tapped into that abuse that he experienced himself that's rough and that and then at the end with silver fox going i don't think we were a thing but wolverine going i feel stuff for you and she's just like i don't i don't want to have anything to do with you which i completely understood well i understand and i wonder if, if they wanted to bring silver fox back again i wonder if she was just going to say well I, I was just protecting myself from you at the time because they did obviously have a thing. I mean, they were in front of the door. Logan brings that up where there was a cabin where they carved their names in it, which I thought was, I thought it was funny. Uh, Logan, I believe it was Logan and Silver Fox. So like her full name is Silver Fox. I mean, wouldn't you just put like SL or Silver on there or something like that? I don't know. But anyway, that wasn't on their set cabin piece that they had. So they knew that they they both remembered it obviously and they knew it was there and they both had experienced the emotions at the time so i think there was something there whether that contributes to how they feel today i don't know but they did have something at some point it wasn't all just made up but even if silver fox believed that they had a thing before you also have the issue of did they have a thing because of these memories that were implanted into them. So, like, I don't know if I would want to go back with somebody where our entire relationship was based on a lie anyway, even if what I felt was real based on what I thought was real at the time. Let's just step back a second and take a look at the entire plot for the episode, because the plot was based on the four of them actually finding the facility again. And then being intrigued enough that all four of them would go into this locked room, which only activates when the four of them are there, as a trap to finally take care of them. That would be like me laying a room in in the basement that only the three kids of mine could go down and open when they're all here, like over Christmas, so that they go in there and then I take care of them down there. I mean, that's just. So, so much wrong is with that. Yeah, go through all of this so I can recapture you and use you again. Because, and then that brings up the question, when have they been used? I think we've seen some of it before with 
Logan's memory and his healing power, he probably stands one of the best chances of getting out of it, like uh, fighting the reactivation, so to speak, just because his power of rejuvenation could assist his brain healing from that. But there's a difference between physical injury and then, you know, the mental injury. So maybe even he was, because he was severely affected by the, the mind uh, washing, the brainwashing, because he was very effective as, as Weapon X. And needing all four of them to unlock that room is certainly a choice. Because I mean, when you need all four of them, you can have three figure it out. Go do whatever they're going to do. And that last person is holding them off from getting reactivated, which again, you know, getting reactivated is a horrible thing. But from the perspective of Weapon X trying to set all this stuff up, why would you want total complicity from everybody? Like, set something up where you can have a partial and get something. That was just horrible planning on their part. Eh, villain logic. <laughs> I have a question on who the villain actually is right now, because Chris, you actually took the liberty of going in and finding these coordinates of where this lab really is. I mean, not that I actually know where it is. It is somewhere. It, it is actually in Canada. I don't know where you would stop counting Southern Canada because we don't have our Canadian correspondent here with us today. It does appear to be south of Edmonton. And basically, looks like a third of the way from between Seattle and Calgary, closer to Seattle. Just looking strictly at longitudinal stuff. Yeah, but this does west. appear to me to be basically nowhere. Well, I mean, it's kind of in the ballpark of where the going to geek owner lives, Stephen. So Stephen could very well be running this team. Ooh. Especially bum, bum, if he bum. has one of those underground monorails that all the superheroes have. Are the lights on his house to distract us from the Weapon X exactly. headquarters? Exactly. It's like, uh, don't pay attention to what's going on over here. I've got my lights over here. Don't pay attention to this evil team that I'm building over here. Look at my cute holiday display in my yard. <laughs> uh, Steven. Trusted you, Steven. How could you? <laughs> Chris, you also bring up a special fight that we may or may not have seen before. I don't remember if we have actually seen this in the show or not, but on Logan and Sabretooth's birthdays, they go have a fight. And that's just a thing that they do. And so I'm sitting here kind of wondering at some points of this toward the beginning, Sabretooth is getting Wolverine to go out there and have a fight? Like, is this their birthday fight that they're having? I don't know. And then later, I don't think it is because you get Silver Fox and Maverick coming in and they usually try not to involve other people in those because they just want to all out wail on each other. But I honestly can't remember if we've seen the birthday fight in the cartoon yet at all. I don't remember seeing it before. I have a vague recollection, recollection of seeing Sabretooth lick frosting off of his fingertip, but I can't tell you where that recollection is for, from. And you ask a question in the show notes here, I'm just going to go ahead and, and say what it is. Dear Canadian Correspondent is leaving your keys in the ignition, a thing up there, and we see Logan in his original jalopy, right? And the keys are just left in the ignition up there. I'm less worried about the keys because those little cars are really easy to hotwire. I'm more interested in is the gas line rotten because cars that have been sitting like that, that is a key indication of that they are going to catch in flames <laughs> because the vapors from the gas line just cause ignition and 
you get all sorts of bad things happening from that. So that is my concern. When I saw the car there, I know it's a cartoon, right? But when I saw the car there, I'm like, ooh, how long has that been sitting there? This could be a car fire. We could have a very crispy superhero team that decides to use this car. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. Well, you have that, plus you have Beast just jumping in the truck to drive them away. And the keys are right there, too. So it's multiple cars. If it was one car, I can believe it. Okay, somebody just leaves their cars the ignition. You're out at the headquarters. Nobody knows where it is. Who cares? But multiple people, that seems a little bit like just a weird societal norm. Aside from the threat of stuff getting stolen, big corporations do that all the time. They leave the keys in the car because you never know who's going to be by next time to operate it. I could kind of see it, kind of, especially that far north. I'm surprised the battery still worked. There you go. There's another one. There was no trickle charger hooked up to either vehicle. Yeah, lots of questions about the cars, guys. I hope we don't have those same questions in Expo 97. So the last episode we covered this time around was have yourself a Morlock little Christmas. This was the X-Men, the animated series holiday special. I think I think it was it was pretty good because it brought up the fact that Storm had abandoned everybody because we haven't seen her with the Morlocks. I, that's a, a key item here. And, and I think it was very special. I mean, I won the right to lead you Morlocks in single combat. And I am Storm. So I'm just going to go do storm things without leaving you my number, my email address, supplies, money. These are things that leaders need to provide. It's not like she's broke now. She's an X-Men. She's living in the mansion. I'm sure there are leftovers in the kitchen. I'm sure she has some money saved up. She has a way of getting excellent medical equipment and medicine. Like the leech and them, the Morlocks should have been like, yo, Storm, we need some medicine because leech is sick because we ran out of the other stuff. Oh, okay. Or she should have like had Xavier build a monorail from where the Morlocks live to the X mansion so they could just come over and get some yearly checkups from the beast because he's a great medical doctor. Worst leader ever. I'm sorry, Storm, you're super cool, but you're like the worst leader ever. And worst leader of the Morlocks because whenever she leads the X-Men, she does okay. So... It's situational poor leadership, I guess. But once again, we have a situation that can be solved by a monorail, and we need more monorails in our modern society. I don't know why we've all got monorails on the brain tonight, but yeah. Get to the monorail! It came up in one episode, and we just cannot let it go. (laughs) It just sits there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, we started the episode out by talking about Cajun Christmas and the Cajun food, at least. So you've got, this is hilarious. You've got Beast trying to make cranberries in his lab. And you've got Gambit and Jane, Jean in the, um, in the normal kitchen just fighting for counter space and spices and stuff like that. And so it's just the stereotypical family of just trying to cook in different places. And I get that the lab would probably be a sanitary place, so you could cook there. But I don't know if I want to eat cranberries that have been exploded in the lab. That's that just says superhero redux origin story all over again. Like, why make it in the lab when you can get it in the can and just sort of watch it? come out in that solid form from the can which to this day i still can't believe that happens it's like what science goes into making cranberries do that have you ever actually made cranberry sauce with cranberries though 
No. You get to watch them explode. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it made. I haven't had it made before and I've tasted it. I'm like, oh, can I have the canned stuff again? Because <laughs> that's what I really want. The stuff that you make is it's really tasty, but it's got chunks in it, like whole cranberry chunks in it and stuff like that. So, uh, well, in this cooking, I have two jobs stay out of her way and keep the cats out of her way. We both learned a long time ago. The third job is you get to taste the tasty morsels that she actually creates. Well, yeah, that too. But we learned a long time ago that we do not coexist well in a kitchen. I have always coexisted in the kitchen okay. It's just, it's, if you're traveling across from one side of the kitchen to the other, no matter how big or small it is, there seems to need to be some sort of traffic light system <laughs> set up of two people are always going the opposite direction right into each other at every single time. And you just need to deconflict that. And I think. I found the answer because if you each don the virtual reality goggles, you can actually have AI direct the traffic around the kitchen. So if there's an island there, you can go around the, you know, you could use the directions from, I don't know, Google Maps or something and, you know, be told the most efficient way to avoid traffic. Well, who's carrying the hot thing? Because whoever's carrying the hot thing gets to go wherever they want. Exactly. I just do it. My mom, my mom's worked in kitchens before and it's like, she just like say behind. And that's what I do. I'm like behind. I like the virtual reality goggles. I'm just, I'm going to stick on that because I think that'd be awesome. Of course she would. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you have to use as an excuse to get yourself some, that's fine. And somebody else with virtual reality goggles that has a problem with Christmas is of course, Scott. Why am I not surprised? Scott has a problem with Christmas. Scott is a poop head. We're keeping this family friendly. Also, we somehow found somebody who sings more off key than me. <laughs> Indeed. This is Jubilee's first Christmas that she's actually having fun with. It's kind of fun experiencing that with her. It brings up a really interesting question, though. How long has this series been going for? Because parts of it make it seem like they've been together for years now, since Jubilee joined up with them. But this is her first Christmas with Wolverine. So is this, has this whole thing so far been within the span of a year? Or has she just somehow missed having Christmas with Wolverine in some of the previous years that she's been with the X-Men? It could have been off-planet a couple of times. Yeah, because I don't know why they're surprised that a villain attacks on Christmas. Villains don't go, oh, it's the holidays. I'm going to take a break. No, villains are villains. And, you know, it did take time for Jubilee to adjust. And she might not have been comfortable with the whole Christmas thing because she did go from foster home to foster home. And she might have had that, when are they going to kick me out vibe for maybe the first couple of years. And Wolverine hates Christmas. So he might have just been like, I'm, I'm out of here to do a quote unquote mission. And finally, she's been able to kind of trap or coerce him into going shopping with him on Christmas Eve, which I have done. My dad just completely never took time to like take me out to go shopping for mom. And so we went one Christmas Eve and the thing about it is we didn't have, we didn't wrap any of the presents. So it was just literally went out, we shopped and then it was just like, here, mom, uh, here's all the things and you don't have to unwrap anything because here it is. Yeah, it's about that time. Here you go. Here's your present, which, by the way, is the last thing on the shelf that we thought would be remotely be <laughs> applicable to you versus the thing that you really might need or want. So, yeah. I have gone Christmas Eve shopping, I want to say once, but it might have been twice. I think once I went just to waste time 
on my way home from work one year. But once I legitimately went shopping after work on Christmas Eve, coming home, and yeah, that was that was pretty rough. As far as Wolverine hating Christmas, I get why he does. But if he's as religious as he is, I think he would like to celebrate Christmas. Christmas is even really the big holiday. No, it's not. In in terms of the Christianity, the big holiday is it's Easter. You're absolutely right on that. So, okay. And I know a lot of people just don't celebrate Christmas, but like to celebrate the holidays because it's time of year to to give and have fun with each other and stuff. So, yeah, whatever works for you is the best. We do get the Morlocks taken care of again. That's neat at the end where Hank comes in and was able to save Leech and Jubilee distributes her presence like Santa's little helper. It all worked out. It's your general love is more important than material goods Christmas episode, which they did well. You know, if you're a cartoon in the 90s, you have to have this episode anyway. It's like having an underwater level on the NES. I like how later in the 90s and the 2000s where shows started to take fun liberties with that. Because, okay, in the 90s you had the the Friends Christmas specials and stuff like that. But as you move forward, like the How I Met Your Mother, they had the big Slaps Giving episode, right? Which... If you've never seen it before, if you've never seen How I Met Your Mother, I would highly encourage you to watch all their slaps giving styled episodes because it's just fun how these slaps just come out of nowhere and it's just entertaining. And and yes, it's slapstick humor where there, there is slapping involved, but it's just fun. So I like how things have evolved over time. As a matter of fact, I think things have evolved over time so much that an episode like Have Yourself a Morlock Little Christmas would make an excellent Hallmark holiday movie on the Hallmark channel. So there needs to be a team up between Marvel slash Disney and the Hallmark channel. I know they're two distinctly different properties, but I think we need this now. Who would be... Okay, so Wolverine is the grumpy, I don't like Christmas person. I know some of the formulas. So you have to have someone who's just like, I don't like being in the small town. I don't like the holidays. I'm wounded. And then we have to have the person who's going to change their mind. Can't be Jean because she's taken. Storm. I I wish it was Storm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be good. There has to be a relationship. So maybe Scott and Jean's first Christmas together. Not as a focus, but as a B story, maybe. Yes, or Wolverine learning how to enjoy Christmas by realizing Jubilee is like he should be adopting Jubilee and being a dad to her. That's that would work. What is Xavier's part in all this? Grandpa. (laughs) The grandpa that's in like five scenes. Yes. That you always see in the background, either fixing something or putting something on the tree or something. Maybe cutting wood or bringing wood in or something like that. Yeah. All right. Chris, you obviously haven't seen any of these because you're just looking at us like, what are you guys talking about? This conversation is the closest I've ever come to seeing a Hallmark Christmas movie. It doesn't matter which one you watch. You only need to see one, and then you kind of get it from there. I might put myself through one, then. I would encourage you to put yourself through one with somebody that is in a property that you regularly watch, like Marvel Comics or whatever it is, right? Video games. The odds are there's a star from that property that has done a character probably a leading character in one of these films. Yeah, I saw the one that starred uh, Simmons. I need to find the one that stars Brandon Ralph. I need to find that one. There, oh, There's a couple, because he plays a fireman. 
No. Yes. He plays a fireman. And that's a whole series. I think there's like three of them for Brandon. And for G- Gemma, there's two. And they're different. Who played uh, Agent Ward? Brett Dalton? He's got one. He's got a really good one, actually. He is goofy as all. So if you've seen him in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and you go and watch this, it's like two way different characters. And it's like, who are you? Because he looks like too much of a goody two shoes, like way too much of a goody two shoes in there. But it's a great story. It's based on a true story. And it's pretty cool. And honestly, I haven't seen too many this year. I know last year, I I think I said I haven't watched too many. I haven't watched one front to end this year. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. What? I know. I've been way too busy or sick or whatever. So no, I haven't seen any of them this year. Usually it's on in the background as I'm doing other stuff. And honestly, I haven't been in front of the TV too much awake. That is because if I've been... I've had a cold and if I feel tired, I'll just fall asleep and that's it. Yeah. They're not holding, nothing is holding my attention. So it's not necessarily this, but yeah, the way things go. All right. Anything more about these three episodes, Chris? No, it's, it's just a ton of Wolverine, a ton of interactions between him and different aspects of his life, getting to go into different aspects of other people's lives, and Storm possibly giving control of the Morlocks over to Callisto after she has already said that, I don't have power over the Morlocks anymore, you guys don't have to listen to me. Oh yeah, you should also listen to me, because I'm going to say Callisto's your leader now. Be a better leader than Storm. Yeah. Get some good leadership training. Yeah, man. This is, uh, unfortunately, it's not presented as what not to do, but yeah, it's a great example of what not to do. So who should you follow then? Because you have the Storm School of Leadership, which is totally ignore part of who you're leading. You have the Scott School of Leadership, which is just be a dick. Who from the cartoon would you actually go to their school of leadership for? Man, I want to say Jubilee, but she is so inexperienced that I think she'd have problems taking leadership in very conflicting situations. Magneto? He had a good (laughs) idea with Asteroid M that almost worked. And Callisto's not bad because at least she cares for her people. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> you have to go outside the X-Men. <laughs> All right. We hope you've been having fun with us as we've been going through these episodes. We don't have too many of these left. We do have next time that we talk about these episodes, which I think will be January 7th, our next recording date in 2023. We'll do the next three episodes, 18 through 21 of season four. But then we're running out. And we've got season five coming up and season five isn't all that long. And then that's it. That's all we got from X-Men, the animated series. Hopefully we'll be in time for X-Men 97. All right. We've got some news to end the year on. You guys ready? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw a story this week that I was kind of scratching my head and interested in talking with you guys about, and that is Marvel has been noted now to have been pushing both Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness for Best Picture Oscar. You can go to the For Your Consideration site and you can see these on there, or at least Thor Love and Thunder. I believe. Doctor Strange is there as well. And I get it from the standpoint of they want the acclaim. 
But best picture, I don't know. I don't know if any of these are ever going to win best picture. The only ones that really have a chance are the Black Panther. They actually have gravitas and meaning. The other awards that they're up for, like special effects and costume design, that makes sense. I can see why they're doing Best Director because one is Sam Raimi and the other one is Waikiki. And they're notable because Waikiki has already won an Oscar for writing and Sam Raimi is Sam Raimi. So maybe it's more of a, we appreciate you so much. That's why we're doing this. I don't really think anyone is that serious or someone dared Kevin Feige. I don't know. Who knows? Well, maybe it's just to get it on the resume that they were considered. Yeah, but. For your okay, I used to live in Los Angeles, and for your consideration campaigns are a pain in the bleep. They're just billboards. They're on buses. They're in the newspaper. They are expensive. It is expensive for a studio to go into this. So I don't know why Marvel is spending more money into doing a for your consideration campaign. If they're doing the campaign, if they're just submitting it and putting it on the list to submit, but they're not doing the like ad campaign because you, there are rounds of voting. And so you, you've got to be thinking about and are they going to send all of those? Cause you also need to send your movie to the voting people because not everyone has seen your stuff. So you've got to spend the money in order to send all of your movies out. And then you've got Oscar people who will just not watch your thing because of what they feel and stuff. It's just interesting if they're on the list and they're on the list, but if they're spending a lot of money behind all of it, that's, Weird since Disney is claiming to be broke and Apple is thinking of buying them, which I cannot still think about because that is just like, whoa. So it's just kind of confusing. I blew your mind with that last week, didn't I? Yeah, I still don't believe it. Does it hurt anything for Marvel to nominate them outside of any money they might be spending? It might hurt future clout with the voting members of the Academy, I guess. Like, you're sending us this? No. Like, I could see that, but I don't see it any different than what they'd say anyway. So, yeah, you might be right. So, on now to a movie which I think all three of us should be considered for the best picture next year, which is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, especially since it has Gwen in it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, it's happening, and it needs more Gwen, but it has lots of Gwen, but it still needs more Gwen, and I'm so excited for this, and I don't know where there's any punctuation in the sentence, but I just need this movie to come out now. Why isn't it June yet? (laughs) I think we broke Chris a little bit there. Yeah, the trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse came out. There was a lot of scenes with Gwen and Miles in it. They seem to be the lead characters. Like before it was Peter Parker was a lead character last time. I think we could say, but, and they were all in it, right? There are so many spider people in this movie. We even get a venom. I remember seeing a venom one, a venom spider. I don't know what it's called, but it obviously was a venom Spider-Man. So yes, you get a lot of stuff, but it definitely seemed like this was miles and Gwen focused. So I think, you're going to be okay here, Chris. It does make me think watching a lot of their, the promo images for it and stuff, they're going to be going towards the Gwen and Miles relationship angle of things, which did happen in the comics. The age, you know, yes, the age thing was a bit problematic in the comics because you had like a 15 year old and a 20 plus year old in there, but they seem to be closer in age as being depicted in this movie. So, okay, whatever. 
but you fix that up, that's fine. I have no issue with that at all. Which does mean you get a lot of Gwen, though. Do you think they're going for a romantic relationship or a brother-sister relationship? In the comics, it was more of a romantic thing, which is what the big issue was with people who were reading it when it came out. I didn't get the sense from watching the trailer, and I've only seen it once, but I didn't get the sense from watching the trailer that they were going for the romantic relationship. I honestly think it was more of a good friend relationship or maybe a brother-sister relationship, but I could be wrong on that. And I just think it's the whole relationship thing that they're leaning on because of the lean Gwen has. Yeah. Yeah, and I like good friend into romantic friendship. I watch a lot of K-dramas, and that's basically kind of how it goes. I like that. It's a slow burn, and it's not the focus. You don't have to have a romantic thing be the focus. You can just have it in the background and have it be a slow burn. Yep. You know, here's a crazy idea. You could just not have it, too. That, too. Well, something that we are going to have is another series. Yes, Marvel's Wonder Man series may arrive in late 2023. Marvel's planned Wonder Man show may have a release window that lands. It's somewhere again in late 2023. Andrew Guest, who's joined the upcoming Marvel Cinematic Universe show as its head writer, listed on his Writers Guild of America page that Wonder Man is scheduled to come out during the 2023-2024 season. Guest is an MCU veteran who's previously worked as a writer on Marvel's Hawkeye series, and he's also written for sitcoms like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Community. There is currently no official announcement from Marvel regarding the show's release date. So if it's 2023 to 2024, we're talking like now time. We're talking like a year from now, if it's that late. And considering Andrew has already worked on Hawkeye and has done Brooklyn Nine Nine and Community, you could kind of already get a feel of what Wonder Man could be. I think Wonder Man always had a comedic value to it of everything that I've seen so far, but I'm not an expert on Wonder Man by any means at all. I'm wondering if this is a little bit premature and that he's just going on the best date that they were working off of. But we have covered the news that looks like phase five is going to be a little bit more spread out, that they're canceling or pushing back projects and stuff like that. So I don't know if this is for sure it'll be 2023 to 2024, but the fact that they were developing it for this time frame means that it'll probably be ready to go in that time frame. And if they delay it, they delay it. It's been known to been happen for the last few years anyway. So yeah, I could kind of see it, but I could see it from the deconfliction angle between other Disney properties on Disney Plus, between the MCU and between just burnout on the MCU. Yeah, although I also really like here seeing a character be the focus of a show like this where literally everything I know about Wonder Man is that the first issue of the current run had a Peach Momoko variant cover. <laughs> I think she's got all the prime on it, doesn't she? I don't remember i should it, it's like peach mocha momoko thank you we're gonna give you tons of covers months so i have no idea i just grab a giant stack at the store i hope she doesn't burn out because she's been doing a lot lately yep burnout is possible What's interesting is that when you release something new, because there has been, I don't know if any of you, I know this is like crossing the streams, but it's been a bloodbath over at HBO and Netflix is starting to cancel some things. It's hard to bring out something new because now with all the streaming sites, you're competing against everything, like everything that's ever existed, you're competing with now. That's tough. This market is completely different than it was five years ago. 10 years ago. I resisted the urge to put any of the news stories that came out on 
HBO Max or Warner Brothers of the past week. James Gunn has been talking quite a bit. Of course, he's the head of DCEU. So we're getting a sense of what's going on over there just from the DC properties and what they're going to carry forward and what they're not. And he's been very selective on his statements, but honestly, he's being asked hard questions and he's been given real answers out. And I appreciate that from somebody that would want to get back into the DC universe. James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy here on Marvel, has taken over DC as we've been talking about. I forget the other guy that he's paired up with. There's actually two of them that are head of the DC universe in WB right now. Not Zaslow, he's the head of Warner Brothers. Anyway, I want to say Saffron, but I know that's wrong. Anyway, James Gunn has been the vocal person because of his all his projects that are coming out, and he's just in front of reporters right now, and they're asking him questions, and he's stating at least what he knows to date, and you're right, it's a bloodbath over there, and it's unfortunate because there's a lot of fans of the characters that are just now having to go, well, am I going to get any more of whatever it is. Batman is their biggest draw. And it was just pointed out this past week by James Gunn that the Robin Robert Patterson Batman is not going to be coming forward as the DC Batman going forward. That kind of cuts the legs out underneath that film. Like I haven't seen the film yet, but I was eventually going to be going on HBO and going, well, maybe I'll watch it. No, now I can't. I'm not. Why would I invest time into it? where I know it's not going to lead anywhere. So I hope Marvel never gets to that point where they have to cut off their arms of so much, right, in order to go forward. But we haven't seen that yet. And if just pushing out the release dates in, in Phase 5 helps, then hopefully that will help. I just feel for Henry Cavill, who don the suit for the end of black adam which is on hbo max and you can turn off your brain and watch one big fight that's basically what it is it's just one big uh fight and i know it means nothing now there's not going to be a sequel but it was there and i just knew it was going to be bad i just wanted to know how bad and i needed i wanted to watch something but i didn't want to think so if you want to watch something and you didn't want to think that's one of your options. And then to see Henry Cavill in the suit for Superman and actually have this, you know, look of, you know, we need to talk. It signaled something, but we're not going to get, we're not even going to get Henry Cavill again, who was told to make the announcement back in October and who has now had to say, I'm not of that job, and he's out of the Witcher job. He's got another series, uh, Warhammer series, that he's been given creative control as well as a lead role in. So I think that's where he's going from now on. Oh, gosh. He knows everything. He paints minis for Warhammer. He's a geek like we are. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, why can't he be a Robotech guy? <laughs> because I would have loved to see a live action Robotech. I don't think he could be Rick Hunter because he's just too big, but I think that would have been cool. But yeah, Warhammer it is. That's where he's going. I forget which production house. I just remember Warhammer and his name. Like, don't worry about him. He's got something going on. So don't worry about Henry Cavill. There has been talk about getting him in the Marvel Universe as well now, too. So. Do it, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Who would you cast him as? I, think I don't know, because there are a lot of good possibilities. Some of those possibilities already have somebody tied to him. There are a ton of mutants that you could do. Yeah. We'll have to think about it and come back later on there like could he be a cyclops i wouldn't want to put that burden on him yeah. give him somebody good he can be fancy <laughs> so he can be archangel yeah. he'd probably be good at that he already knows how to fly digitally that is true that is legit a thing that they wouldn't have to teach him though so yeah it's not nothing 
Well, we've had a ton of fun discussing the end of the year. Uh, we're not going to do end of the year predictions or anything like that. Uh, the next thing I believe is February that comes up in the Marvel Universe. We're going to be doing X-Men the Animated Series between here and there. And if you have any thoughts, listener, on what you want us to cover in the future, let us know and we will go that direction because we're going to have some time on our hands as we go forward. All right, let's get this one out now. Listeners, viewers, we just want you to know that no matter what you're celebrating this season or if you're not celebrating anything this season just make sure that you are being the best person that you can be and thank you for taking the time to spend some of this end of the year time with us yes we always appreciate you interacting with us whether it's on twitter who knows how long that's going to exist discord all of that have a good holiday season happy new year see you in 2023 brain yeah it's gonna be a fun year there's a lot of stuff that we're looking forward to all right that's a wrap on 2022 for legends of shield i'm director sp I'm Agent Michelle. And I'm Agent Chris. See everybody next time. Bye. Bye. See you next year. Santa, give me a good present. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of Shield, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2023.